Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing Jeff the Killer, who is a character from a creepypasta story. Now, a creepypasta is basically a scary story on the internet. Why it's called pasta, I don't know. Whether the first ever one was about pasta, I don't know. But the reason why creepypastas are so, well, in my opinion, why they're so, I don't want to say popular, um, why they're so culty is because, um, because they're on the internet, um, on the internet you can sort of fabricate anything. Um, people often come up with a story and then create things on the internet um, to um, kind of back up their story. For for example, like sort of monster um, creature spotting stories. Um, people kind of Photoshop images and like website, cursed websites, people actually create the actual website or um, video footage, people will sort of doctor footage and put it onto the internet and because it's um, because this day and age, um, the internet is so accessible to anyone, um, going viral and spreading is um, inevitable for any kind of story. So that's why the stories kind of spread quickly. So I'm going to do um, Jeff the Killer. Uh, Jeff the Killer was um, the creepypasta story with Jeff the Killer uh, features is called Go to Sleep, I think. Now um, I did a little bit of research. I don't know what the original. Uh, whether I found the original story because I'm sure it's been doctored a few times it's quite Jeff is one of the most popular creepypasta characters from what I can gather the story of Jeff the Killer is um, Jeff moves to a new um, town with his family and um, while he's out with his um, brother he gets badly um, attacked by bullies and they burn his face whether it's on fire or with acid, I'm not sure, but basically he gets horribly, horribly disfigured. He basically snaps and, um, and I'm not sure, I can't remember if he kills them, but he hurts them in some way and, like, um, stabs them and stuff. And he comes home and then he basically breaks down and he cuts his, um, a permanent smile across his face and he cuts his eyelids off so he can avoid sleep and um, paints his face completely white over his horrible disfigured face and his mum finds him and he kills her and kills his brother and his dad and any other family members runs off and he's still out there so that's, that's how it ends and obviously there's been photographs on the internet of um, people sort of photoshopped his face on um, so yeah I'm going to um, do a look, it's inspired by Jack, uh, Jeff the Killer. Now, because this is just a creepypasta story, there hasn't been, been an official look of him, I think. I think all the looks have been sort of inspired by the story. So, basically that's the kind of look you want to go for. You want to go for a um, horrible skin that's been painted over white, cut off your eyelids, and um, with a permanent smile on your face. So. That's it. Um, hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for watching. Now for Jeff's smile, I'm not sure whether, and you can do either or, I'm not sure whether to go for um, the cut to do it like a whole, like a re really deep cut, or just have like a little scar, straight scar. I'm probably going to do for the, like the full mouth, like open cut there, just because if I do this makeup with just the scar coming up there for the smile. Um, it will look too much like the Joker, Heath Ledger's Joker, which I've done a, um, I've already done a tutorial for, which you can watch here. Um, so I'm going to do the, like a kind of full mouth smile, make it a bit more, hopefully it'll be a bit more creepier. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to feel where my teeth, uh, where the lower teeth meet the upper teeth, which is like there. And I'm gonna draw it in. I'm gonna go along where the teeth naturally are, which I think is about there. Yeah, so eventually that's where my mouth's going to go.
I'm going to take some Pritt stick and just flatten out my brows because I'm going to um, try and cover them up as, be as best as I can. I'm guessing the her Jess brows would have been singed off. Now because Jess' face is completely painted over in white, um, obviously you don't need to burn your skin off and then paint over it, but we can create the effect that the skin is, is um, burnt underneath. And the way I'm going to do that is going to take some liquid latex and some toilet paper. And what we're going to do is basically, we're going to layer up with um, in different sections of the face. So where, and it'll just show where bits of the skin have sort of peeled away and stayed intact and stuff. So I'm going to put some liquid latex on in. I'm going to put la the latex on all over my face and then pop the tissue paper in random areas. And I would suggest um, ripping it and making it really, really like messy as you can. So pop it on there, and then once you get a little bit of, you get that mostly on there. Just wax some more latex on. The latex and toilet paper um, effect is basically the same as uh, papier mâché. It's um, well, you know, you know what papier mâché looks like. And it is um, completely safe, you don't have to worry, unless you're allergic to latex. So obviously you don't don't do this. Um, if you're allergic to latex, you could, um, I don't actually know what you could do instead. You could, um, there might be there might be some latex free um, glues in available. I would have thought there would be. I mean, like, because latex is quite a um, you know, co common thing to be allergic to, so I'm guessing they would have invented something that's, you know, latex free. I suppose you can use eyelash glue, um, but I don't know if it'd be strong enough. Okay, what I will say for this bit here, because it won't create the illusion that you've cut into your mouth, you want to apply quite a thick layer of tissue around this area here to make it look like it's um, you know, protruding, so therefore this looks like it's sunken in, if you like. So you want something along the lines of this. Now, the nose. Um, I'm guessing his nose, because this part of your, you know, this part of the nose is, um, there's no bone there, so it'd be easily burnt off. So I'm guessing his nose is disfig disfigured. Now, I have a disfigured nose, I know I do. Um, you want to kind of make it look flat. I've got quite a flat nose. So I might add a tiny bit, just a little bit of tissue paper just across there. But I don't really need to do much. If you've got a thin bridge of your nose, or your nose is quite fine, you want to add um, quite a lot of tissue paper to make it look flat. Um, so I'm going to add just a couple of strips, just to make it look a bit more flatter. I never thought I would say I want to make my nose flatter, but there you go. So yeah, now we've got the sort of background on. And I've got latex all, I can smell latex really strongly. <laughs> okay, next up we're going to use Blanc de Clown Snazaroo. Um, you want to um, create the illusion that the face has been painted white. So we're going to take a brush and we're going to do it in cross hatches, so come across like that, and then come across like that. Almost like we're painting over a canvas. So yeah, I really like creepy pastas. They're like, they're like my guilty pleasure. Um, if you want to tell me in the comments which one's your favourite one, I think my favourite one, out of the famous, the sort of famous, well-known ones. It's probably 1999. I thought that was really, really good because I haven't really, really come across a story similar to it, and I think it should be made into a, a TV show or even even a film. Um, yeah, that's a really good one. I don't tend to go for sort of boogeymen 
stories, you know, I like ones that sort of like, not necessarily that they could be true, but they could happen, um, but yeah, ones that sort of, that they're just nice, or not nice, they're sort of stories and then that's it. I don't really go for the ones that sort of tend to, you know, boogeyman ones, the ones that sort of say, oh, it might be true, and ones that sort of, like, you know, carry on from like, oh, they could still be out there and all that. I just like the ones that have just they're good, good stories to read. Um, let's see, I'll do my, I'll do my top, top five. I like Nine 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 is probably my favourite one. Um, I like there's one called Meek, which um, I thought was very interesting. It's basically um, very very relevant to today. It's basically about how being addicted to the internet often shuts you off from reality and um, with disastrous consequences. Um, there is this one called Barbie. There's two Barbie stories and they're both good. Um, I, and there is... Um, what else is there? I like where the bad kids go. It's kind of similar to 1999, I think. But you know ones sort of like Ben Drowned and The Rake and all those? I don't really like those ones because they just, they're good to read, but, you know, they're just um, kind of supernatural stories, aren't they? Oh, and there's another one called, um, another story about a skater called Anora Petrova, which is a very good story. Yeah, so tell me in the comments which is your favourite creepypasta story and you know which one I should, which ones I should check out. Okay I'm gonna do the eyes. I'm gonna take a red pencil. I'm going to um you can do red pencil or red paint or red shadow um as long as it's red. I'm just gonna take this sort of around my roughly around my eye area because I want to sort of create the illusion of A because he's cut off his eyelids and also he's been burnt that sort of um you know that effect. So it's sort of bloody and also burnt. I will be adding some fresh flake blood eventually. So I'm going to go round and we're going to avoid the lid space because obviously now the lid isn't there anymore. We're going to take that off with the power of makeup. Don't worry, not not going to cut my lids off. C can't be asked to do that. And then just with a soft brush, just work that red in. This, this red's just going to be the base, like kind of like part of his skin. Where he's been, you know, burnt and cut and all that. So he's obviously bled a little bit. Uh, the costume for Jeff, it was just basically a hoodie. I think he wears a grey or a white hoodie. Um, but this is the only hoodie I had to hand. Um, you just basically want to go in real sort of plain teenage teenager clothing. Okay, we need to create the illusion that the of the eyelids being cut off. So I'm going to put some white over the where the eyelids are, and also I need to cover up these lashes. We don't want them anymore. Like so. This would be great if you had hooded eyes. So you just put some white over there onto your lid and over the lashes because you want to have no black there at all. Okay, now I've got some black eyeshadow sugar pill and with a fine um, tapered brush Just lightly, just 
until you get the shape in, then you can go as heavy, as heavy as you want to and go right underneath as well. And I think I'm going to take a white pencil, this isn't that fascinating, I'm just going to go just through the waterline. And I'm just taking my red pencil and just for now around my mouth I'm going to create the illusion of sort of like dried blood. Okay, just going to enhance the, the black on my eyes. I'm going to take some Clinique True Black Liner. And just scatter it across in like really, really like sporadically. I've got some fake blood. It's like a gel blood. And just gonna go around the lids because obviously where he's cut his lids, they would have bled a bit, so I'm just gonna add some more um blood there. Okay, now I'm gonna draw it in the mouth next. I might leave the lips clear just for the last uh, minute because as I talk it's going to like rub off so yeah Okay, I just bought this um, blood spray and uh, I thought it would spray on, like splatter, but it's just coming up really gloopy. I don't know whether I have to add any water to it or anything, but um, yeah, I'm going for just going to take a cotton bud and just add little specks. Okay, that's that, and then I'm just going to take my white again, and I'm just going to go over the top of most of that because to make like look like he's painted over like old blood, but you can still sort of see the blood underneath. And to finish off, just back comb it. If you want to make it look um, really tatty and like it's been burnt off. Um, if you want to do like a put a ball cap on, sort of pull your hair through it to make it look like it's burnt off in patches, then you can do that. But um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make it all tatty. So yeah, this has been my t my take on the Jack the Killer character from the story Go to Sleep from Creep Creepy Pasta. Um, yeah, it's quite similar to a Joker, really. I think. And so a bit messy with fake blood, so we have to make sure you've got lots of, lots of towels around you. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you want me to do another creepy pasta inspired look, I'll I'll give it a go. Um, and yeah, let me know what your favourite creepy pasta story is in the comments. So, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all soon. Bye.